Hi, I'm Jason Weinberger, Pauline Barrett Artistic Director of WCF Symphony, and I'm so thrilled to have you back in my home again for another episode of our Concert Library series, Live from the Archive. Now, today's Live from the Archive is a little bit different than the first seven that we've created over the last year because we are marking one year since we gave our last performance for a live audience. A year like no other, and especially for those of us in the performing arts or any other industry that relies on large group of people gathering together, uh, have been through a huge amount over this period of time. But as I was reflecting on this date and thinking back to last year's performance, I was really struck by how positive this year has been for the symphony, um, for myself in many ways, uh, uh, partly as a musician, certainly um, in terms of my uh, my life as a father, um, just, just a, a, I think, a tremendous opportunity in so many ways for us to be thinking about things and doing things we wouldn't otherwise have done. Uh, of course, that doesn't change the fact that we haven't been able to see all of you music lovers in person. Um, so this, uh, this installment of Live from the Archive is a little bit different than, than the previous ones we've done. Whereas before, we kind of cast our net across the last 10 years looking for really exciting performances that we could combine into new programs. Today, we just simply take a look back and have a chance to reflect, um, remember what it felt like to be in, a, in a, an auditorium with other people listening to a performance made by a large orchestra. Um, I was really struck when I listened to this performance from a year ago of what it sounded like to hear myself talk to the audience. I've been talking to a camera as my means of communication with all of you for a year, and it was really quite striking. So we're going to hear a few of those thoughts, as well as one movement of our performance of Brahms' Fourth Symphony from a year ago. And I think this piece and my comments are a wonderful foil for this moment, because Brahms is a very um, reflective composer, but he's also very emotional. And he's someone who was quite original and yet relied so much on the history that was behind him. I addressed that a little bit in my comments, but I think when we have a moment to look back and consider our present and to look forward, and this very much feels like that moment here, one year after we gave our last performance. Um, you know, I think it, it's nice to be able to relate uh, to music that's in that same position, Brahms Fourth Symphony, very much looking back, very much rooted in its moment and in Brahms's style, and also looking forward. So we'll let you hear some of this wonderful, beautiful, soul-fulfilling music. And when it's over, back with a few more thoughts about the bright future that awaits us after the pandemic. So a few words about Brahms' Fourth Symphony before we perform it for you. And it, in one way, it is a change of direction for our concert this evening after hearing newer music by Joan Tower. Um, in other ways, I think these composers fit well together because their music is so um, well-crafted and it's like, it's, it's just incredibly well finished and you feel that as a musician when you play it. And there's no other composer whose music feels quite as determined and finished as Brahms. Um, it has just a, a certain kind of weight to it and a certain realness um, that seems to elude most other composers. And I think one of the reasons that's the case is because Brahms really spent a lot of his time as a musician throughout his career thinking about music of the past. And, and this is a little unusual. I, I, I want to just pause for a second, because if we went to Beethoven's lifetime earlier in the 1800s, or we went to Mozart's lifetime at the end of the 1700s, the, the percentage of music on concerts during that time that was by composers of the past was something like six, seven, eight percent of all pieces performed in the late 1700s, early 1800s were by composers who were not alive. And by Brahms' lifetime at the end of the 1800s, it had flipped. It was 90% of the music on concerts was by com de deceased composers or composers of the past. So that's the context for Brahms' experience, is increasingly musical life was becoming obsessed with the past. And he was a composer among many, but who most sort of studiously was involved in studying and playing the music of Bach and of Mozart and Beethoven. And you hear it throughout Brahms' music. And I think in particular in the Fourth Symphony, he's near the end of his life. This piece is written in the 1890s. He would end up dying just, uh, I think, two years after this piece had its premiere. And so in, in, in many ways, it's kind of a, a work that's 
um, has a, a valedictory kind of feeling to it, uh, but there's also a strong sense that Brahms is surveying music history and kind of pulling it up into his artwork in order to, to try and give some sort of finality to himself, really, I think, as a composer, but also to, to give some indication of where music was going. Just to give you a sense, this piece was written just after Mahler's second symphony. It was written just before Debussy wrote Pelias and Melisande. So there's this incredibly explosive time in the arts, and Brahms here is at the end of his life, and you know, he sees it coming, but he's not going to be there to witness it. Uh, and I think a lot of that is wrapped up in the way that he conceived of this piece. Um, in any case, uh, one thing I would like you to do tonight in Brahms' Fourth Symphony and the experience of listening to it is journey with us. I feel like this music in particular, from one movement to the next, all the way to the very end of the piece, is kind of singular in the symphonic repertoire in that we sort of open a door at the beginning and we walk through together and we, we come to the end of a journey together at the very end of the symphony. I hope you feel that way, but, but let yourself go with us tonight. That's what we're hoping to do with our performance, and that's what we hope that you uh, experience here tonight in this magnificent music from the very end of the life of Johannes Brahms.
Well, that music has meant so much to me for so much of my life. Uh, from the time I was a clarinet player and, and studying those clarinet solos, ready to play them at auditions, um, through my years of studying Brahms music as a conducting student, young conductor, performing all of his symphonies, finally coming to the fourth symphony last, and being fortunate enough to have performed it several times, including the last performance before the performing arts and so many other things in our lives were changed forever by the COVID pandemic. Now, for so many musicians and artists and, and just countless uh, uh, individuals and families around the country, um, this has been in many ways a very devastating moment. And I think that's been one of the hardest things about the last year, grappling with what's happened around us, um, trying to find some meaning in it, some solace in it. Uh, but there's also been uh, so many wonderful examples of um, kind of uh, positivity and, and people taking what's been given to them and, and turning it into something really forward thinking and forward moving. And that's what we've tried to do here with the symphony. And the last year really has been a wonderful year for us in the sense of allowing us to explore this digital space that we've shared with you, um, to hear from so many of our colleagues in the orchestra about what's been going on with them, bring you behind the scenes to take a look at what goes on there, explore some music from outside the classical canon through our Radio Hour series. And uh, it's been especially wonderful for us to be able to interface with educators, homeschoolers, uh, on a whole series of educational programs. And this spring, we have some great concerts for young people, um, picking up right where we left off um, towards the end of the year with our, our new live events. We've got two special things coming up this spring. One is the launch of our new series for the youngest concert goers. It's called The Music Lab. And it's a wonderful space for exploration and experimentation and inspiration. And those are some of the topics that we're going to cover in the first few installments of the Music Lab, which are rolling out this month. Um, can't wait for you to see it. It's a, it's a ton of fun, and we're really excited to extend this series back into the real-life space as the conditions allow. We're also going to be uh, premiering a new digital concert. Again, this one is really wonderful for families. It's called World Winds. And this program will explore the fabulous world of woodwind music. Um, all of my colleagues from the group joining me and bringing you some well-known pieces for woodwinds and maybe some lesser known and humorous pieces as well. We're really excited about these programs this spring. And one of the things we're most excited about with everything we've done in the past year is that we've been able to offer it to you free of charge and on demand. This was something we really uh, felt strongly about when we began this process. And your generosity has been what has allowed us to do this. The support of so many corporations and organizations that have been our partners for a long time here in the community, our grantors who have just been absolutely wonderful in helping us secure our funds that enable us to continue to operate. And of course, all of you, our listeners, our patrons, um, all of our friends who have just stepped up this year um, especially when we said, hey, we're not going to sell tickets. <laughs> we just need some help so we can bring you music and thoughts about music. And you've all done that this year. We're incredibly grateful. It's been amazingly moving for me to be a part of this. And I just want to take this opportunity to thank all of you who have continued to support WCF Symphony through the last year. You are enabling us to make plans for many years to come. And speaking of which, We'll wrap up right now with just a few thoughts about the future as we look ahead to the summer, where we expect to be doing outdoor live concerts for audiences. Of course, with whatever uh, necessary precautions need to be taken, but we're very excited to be able to get back to live concert making and to bring the accessibility of our free online programming to a whole set of free summer concerts. We'll be having some smaller special events as well throughout the summer. I think we're going to see over our future uh, immediate term and long term that warmer weather outdoor concerts will certainly increasingly be a, a part of the mix with WC of Symphony. We've done them once, twice a year in the past. I would expect to see that happening more in the future. But we're not going to abandon some of the wonderful things we do indoors. So we expect to be back in the Gallagher Blue Door and at some point over the course of the next concert season. 
Um, what we're going to be doing is announcing our concerts a little bit um, closer to when they happen. So you won't see a full season from us coming up here in the spring. Instead, you'll have a chance to um, see what's up over the summer. Then as the summer unfolds, we're going to introduce a whole series of things for the fall into the winter, and then likewise for the first part of 2022. And we hope when we get to that time, we will finally be at a point where it will be safe for us to all gather together again, and that by that stretch of time in 2022, we can revisit what it felt like to be in a big concert hall full of other music lovers and wonderful musicians on stage playing music like this fabulous Brahms Fourth Symphony. Thank you.